Hello everyone, my name is Emily Lewis and I am the English Language Development Facilitator for the district. I've had the opportunity to meet many of you, but for those um, whom I have not had the privilege of meeting yet, I look forward to um, hopefully getting to visit your classroom sometime during this school year. Um, I'm here today to um, share with you some text accessibility strategies that you can use with the multilingual learners in your classrooms. Um, it is important to remember that multilingual learners can do and often have positive learning experiences with complex text, and they are able to get some of the instructional meat out of that text. Um, but we just need to make sure that the texts are presented in a way that supports their comprehension. So I'm here today to share with you a few ways to scaffold for MLs so that they can interact with your complex text and participate in learning. These strategies are not hard to put into practice in your classroom, and I think that you will find that um, they are fairly easy to start um, using daily with your multilingual learners. With our MLs in mind, I am sure that you are already in the habit of considering um, with each text that shows up in the classroom, is this text comprehensible for our MLs? And what strategies for MLs might be beneficial here? The thing is, our students already have cognitive assets that they've been using to make sense of words on a page. They're constantly making connections to familiar words, contextual clues, synonyms, and cognates. There may be some things in their home language that is common with English, and they have already locked in some of these patterns. When confronted with a grade level complex text, our MLs can put these assets together with our scaffolds to get the most out of reading. With time, they will need fewer scaffolding as their English proficiency grows. Today, I'm going to share with you five simple strategies to help multilingual learners access complex text. Those five strategies include the use of color, breaking down text into smaller sections, inserting synonyms and symbols, adding images and sketches, and lastly, the use of graphic organizers. One simple strategy for multilingual learners is the purposeful use of color in text. There are so many possibilities. You can use color to differentiate ideas, words, sentences, or paragraphs for a specific purpose. You can add color to set apart parts of speech, key vocabulary, rhyming words, parts of a word, sentence, or paragraph, academic vocabulary, characters or characters' actions, important details, key words in assessment questions, topics that need to be dif differentiated or compared to one another, spelling or phonemic patterns, and so many more. The important thing to remember is that colors should be premeditated, purposeful, and explained to students. Therefore, when you use color to scaffold complex text, you need to make sure that you always are using the same colors to highlight for the same purpose. So if you are highlighting key vocabulary in blue, you always want to highlight key vocabulary in blue. If you are highlighting parts of speech in red, you always want to identify those parts of speech in red and make sure that your students know the colors and the purpose of each color um, so they begin to make those connections when they see them in the text. Our second strategy is breaking text into smaller sections. Also called chunking the text, 
This strategy visually breaks up longer pieces of text. This helps the students be able to process and comprehend the text in a manageable amount. This can be helpful at the word, sentence, and paragraph level. There are several ways you can do this. You can draw a vertical line after sentences to add a more evident break where desired. You can circle or underline sections of words or text. As seen on the screen here, you can simply increase the space between paragraphs. You can break apart a longer text and add each paragraph to a slide in a presentation. You can use sections of a longer text to focus on during your small group instruction and use sections of a longer text for assessment purposes. The important thing to remember when chunking the text is that the goal is to leave visual space between the sections to make it um, easier for students to see where the text divides um, should naturally occur. This will help them um, read in smaller sections and actually work on comprehension in, in smaller sections instead of becoming overwhelmed with a super long passage. The next strategy is about inserting synonyms and symbols into text. As students are learning new vocabulary all the time, they really benefit from reminders or reinforcement of word meanings. When you spot a word in a text that you prevent or that you predict might hinder comprehension, simply inserting a synonym next to it can be extremely helpful. As you can see on the screen, I have circled the word formed and just written below that word, the synonyms grew and developed as these are words that students are already familiar with and can make connections to. Um, another example would be if you are um, providing or asking students to um, do an exit, complete an exit ticket before leaving class for the, the day and your directions read, consider our lesson today, you might simply insert the words think about right above the word consider. Symbols or think marks can be a great way to increase engagement as well, especially during shared reading or think aloud activities. They can aid comprehension of meaning as students view your modeling your own response to text. This might include inserting emojis, stars to show importance, or simple lines to connect ideas. They don't have to be anything fancy, just showing students and modeling for your students the process that you're going through um, will help them start to understand um, and make connections to the text that they're reading as well. <laughs> the next strategy is adding images and sketches to text. Many strategies for multilingual learners involve adding images or visuals to support text comprehension. If you've broken down a reading passage into smaller sections, take a moment to also insert a small image next to each section. Want some essential unit vocabulary to be noticed and understood in context? Slide an image in near or next to the word. As you can see on the screen, I have taken um, some images and just inserted them below vocabulary and um, then put some arrows so they the students could see um, which image represented the dust and gas versus which image represented the magma. So if you're in the middle of a lesson and you realize that the text lacks visual scaffolds, it's okay to just whip out a marker and do a quick sketch to support vocabulary meaning. You don't have to be a fantastic artist. 
A few stick pig figures drawn on the page is better than no figures being drawn to support learning at all. Just do the best you can and your students will learn to appreciate um, those quick sketches. The last strategy I have for you is the use of a graphic organizer. This is an extremely powerful scaffold for multilingual learners. Um, as long as you have a purposeful use of graphic organizers in your classroom. If you're able to take those chunked text that we talked about earlier and insert them into a graphic organizer, such as a circle map, a timeline, a comparison chart, or an order of events template, it can help your multilingual learners see the relationship between parts of the text, view the order of importance, or chronological order of events, understand a cause-effect relationship, or grasp the main idea of an entire text. The example on the screen shows how the parts of text relate to one another and builds the skill of recognizing connections between sections of the text. Using graphic organizers to um, support the chunking of text um, makes the text easier for your MLs to visually digest the material that you're putting in front of them. So all of those strategies are um, appropriate for all levels of English proficiency. But you may be thinking, I have students who are at the beginning level of English proficiency. What do I do for those students? These students may need a more appropriately, appropriately modified text in order to access the content and information. For these students, I do re recommend providing the text to them in their home language if available. A, trans, a translation app such as Deeple or the Read and Write extension for Google Chrome are also some recommended tools that can be used to help your newcomer or students with beginning English proficiency levels access complex text. Another option that can actually be more time efficient but should be used very sparingly is for you to rewrite rephrase or paraphrase the text, bringing it to a reading level that is appropriate. The benefit of this strategy is that you can be sure to include all of the most important content that the student needs to learn. Websites such as rewordify.com will do this for you while keeping the rich vocabulary of the original text. I would recommend using your professional judgment to determine when significant text modification is needed because at the end of the day, it is important for all students, regardless of their English proficiency level, to have exposure to and engagement with complex grade level text. As you can see, the strategies that I've shared with you today are simple strategies that um, can easily be implemented into your daily instruction, <clears throat> um, but they will allow for your multilingual learners to be able to better access and comprehend the complex text that we are putting before them. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you have questions about any of these strategies. Um, or if you um, would like to know some other strategies that may be appropriate to use with your multilingual learners, um, please reach out to me. Um, if um, you don't remember how to contact me, um, then you can reach out to your ESL teacher in your building as well as they all have me on speed dial and can reach out. Um, but remember that those ESL specialists in your building are also um, great assets, and they are experts in um, providing scaffolds for your multilingual learners. So um, they should be able to share a wealth of knowledge with you as well. Um, 
I hope that you have found this helpful and I look forward to visiting some of your classrooms and seeing some of these strategies being um, put to good use. All right, thank you.